We are here with another Teacher of the Year profile, and right now we're speaking with Patty Buckholtz, mm -hmm. who is the Teacher of the Year for the Sacramento County Office of Education. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. So now you are a teacher in the Infant Development Program. Yes. So let's explain what that is. So the Infant Development Program is a program where we work with families that have babies birth to three years old who have demonstrated developmental needs. And so those could be needs um, anywhere from a vision impairment or a hearing impairment to children that are later on diagnosed with autism. Some of our kiddos have uh, cerebral palsy and some have um, delays and we just don't know why. So we call that an un unknown etiology. We work with little ones that demonstrate a delay in development and our program is designed to go into the home and teach the caregiver strategies that they can use throughout the day and the various activities that they engage their little ones in so that the little ones are learning all day long. So whereas uh, conventional teachers have a classroom of students, mm -hmm. you have one student at a time. Exactly, basically. exactly. And our classroom is the home. So explain a, a typical day and what that might be like mm -hmm. for you uh, doing a home visit. So when I do a home visit, I, I would obviously drive out to the home and um, I've ha already made the appointment with the family, so they should be expecting me as I knock on the door. And then we enter the home and we go to whichever room in the home is comfortable for the family. So I don't insist that we sit at a table. I typically end up sitting on the floor, as that's where the little ones are, um, and make sure that the family, whoever is the family member that is there, or all of the family members, uh, sometimes we have many family members, in the home with us and make sure that they're all comfortable as well. So we want to make, uh, make it clear with the family ahead of time that they get to sort of run the show in a lot of ways. Um, it's their home. They're welcoming, welcoming us into their home and I want to be very respectful of that and you know help them be comfortable with this stranger coming in to offer suggestions on how they work with their babies. So how does a family come to be aware of your services? Families come to us through a variety of avenues. Uh, pediatricians can make a referral to us. Um, some of our families have heard about us because they have a friend or a family member who has had received services from our program. And we have been doing uh, quite a bit of outreach, uh, trying to make sure that other agencies um, know about our program. So we get referrals now from foster family uh, agencies, um, CPS, um, Head Start programs, preschool programs. Um, so anyone can make a referral to our program. And we take all referrals, but the first point of business at that point then is to call the caregiver who has uh, legal rights, legal educational rights for the child, talk to them about the referral that has been made and determine whether or not they have concerns and if we can set up an appointment to come to their home, make an assessment, determine whether or not their child is eligible for our program, and then go from there. So what's it like when you're dealing with, with a family who kind of coming to grips mm -hmm. with the fact that, I mean, maybe they suspected that their child was not developing mm -hmm. uh, as he or she should. What's that like for the parent? No, that's, um, that's a, really, a really good question. That's one of the things that we, uh, as a program, have received a lot of training on. And it's really important to us that we listen to families, we understand where families are, we gather information about what they're feeling about that. For some families, this is really traumatic information. Um, you, know, they're, you know, they may have this baby born and we have you know, the best of expectations through pregnancy and delivery, and then we find out that we have a baby that maybe doesn't hear as well as other children or doesn't move well or can't hold their head up you know, at, at, at the proper developmental time. And that's really scary for some families. Um, and so we look at how the caregivers, the mommies and the daddies and grandparents and siblings might be feeling about that. And what we want to make sure is that they can start to see tiny, tiny little changes, little growth changes that, that their babies are making. And we celebrate those changes. We celebrate that development and understand that development is happening. It may happen in a slightly different way, on a slightly different schedule, but things are improving, things are getting better. And most importantly, the things that the family is doing with the baby is ensuring that these changes are happening. They're the teachers, they're the primary teachers. So we can go in and coach and, and suggest strategies. They're the ones that are with the babies all these hours during the day that are implementing the strategies and helping the babies 
grow and change. And what kind of results do we see from, from this type of care? I think we see fabulous results. Uh, by and large, we see really, really good results. And we can, you know, we measure that through our, our assessment and our, our data collection. But we see um, changes. And what I look for is, is, is making sure that we're seeing growth in the child beyond what might just happen if we hadn't been involved. And so we like to see some, some catch-up growth. I like to see um, children that are, you know, because children will, will grow anyway, just, just, the, you know, just on the basis of getting older, children grow and learn, you know, develop new skills. But we like to see that they are learning new skills faster than might have happened before. And we you know, find that out through the data that we collect. Um, but I have a number of children that you know, had, say, for example, no words when we started working with them. And, Six months later, they're using words, and, and maybe a few months after that, they're starting to combine words. We occasionally see, or actually not too occasionally, we, we actually see fairly frequently children that will graduate our program and not need further special education. So at age three, we help ch families transition to special education with their local school districts to their special education preschool programs. and. Many times we have families that have children that are no longer eligible, which we celebrate, we think is wonderful. Um, sometimes children do need some support, um, and that support ranges from you know, a full day, five day a week program to just a little bit of therapy here and there, you know, once or twice a week. And so we, I think, see really good results. I'm really proud of, of the work that we do. Explain the gratification you get mm -hmm. with working with this specific student population. Tell me what you get out of it. What I get out of it. I, I feel very proud, very honored, and very humbled to be welcomed into homes and work with these families and to see the growth in the family as well as the growth in the baby that we're working with. Um, to see families move past that that fear and grief that they may have when they're first starting to work with us and move into joy and celebration of this the child and see the child become a fully f contributing member of the family, not just the baby that maybe has, has, has an issue or, or a challenge to look what he can do. And we went to the fair and we did, you know, get all these wonderful reports from families about the things that they do. and. That really warms my heart. That, that's what keeps me in this program. What would you say to those uh, who are considering teaching as, as a profession, but specifically what you do? Um, what mm -hmm. kind of advice would you give them? Oh, I think I would tell them that it is the best work they can do, and I think it's also some of the hardest work that they can do, um, from my point of view, um, because it involves not just teaching in their area of, of knowledge. You know, for in my point, or for me, I went to school and I became a speech language pathologist. So I'm a speech therapist. But I go into homes and I work with families and I deal with grief and trauma and motor skills, how, how babies are moving, because that influences how they can then communicate. Um, I look at you know, cognitive and problem solving skills for little ones. So it, it begins to be a much larger um, career path um, and very challenging but so exhilarating to see the changes that these families and these babies make um, and to be able to walk you know walk that path with them and, and coach them and, and see the magic that happens when I'm not there you know I, I'm there and I'm coaching families and and you know telling you know mom or dad to try this or that and then they do it while I'm not there and I come back and you know there's this magical change that you know they've made, and their child's made, and it's all, it's just wonderful. What does it mean for you to be a Teacher of the Year? Oh, I am a bit overwhelmed <laughs> and um, very, I would have to say I'm obviously very honored um, that I was selected as Teacher of the Year, but I also find it very humbling. I um, hope that I represent SCOE well and that I represent the team that I work with and my program very well too. Um, so this has been um, a bit of a wild ride. And, <laughs> and I have learned a lot from this process of, of 
of the work for, for becoming Teacher of the Year and the interview process and the writing process has really taught me a lot more about my thoughts about what I do and um, how unique the work is that, that I do, that, that my program does. Well, congratulations to you. Thank We've been you speaking very with much. Patty Buckholz, who is with the Sacramento yeah. County Office of Education, mm -hmm. and she is our Teacher of the Year in the Infant Development Program. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.